In this video, we will derive an equation for the resultant waves and two waves have are interfering with each other. So let's say we have V1 going like this and there is another wave which is interfering with this and let's say it's constructive interference. So what will happen is the second wave will probably be like this something like this so this is the second wave and when these two waves interfere with each other and this constructive interference the, the resultant wave the resultant wave uh, probably will look uh, let me let me get some the color let's take and take blue and see how it looks like these two will interfere and they, these uh, displacements will get added up and we'll get a we'll get a resultant wave something like this and you know this is constructive interference similarly we could also have uh, destructive interference so uh, let's say this is the first wave something like this and then the second wave is something like this and as you can see over here, the crest of this wave matches with the drop of this wave. And the resultant is that these two cancel out each other. And the resultant wave is actually not a wave, it's a straight line because they will cancel out each other. And uh, what will happen is that the wave, the effect of this is there will be no wave and they will simply have a straight line going like this. So this is the case of destructive interference. Right. I want to get an equation for the resultant wave. I want to get an equation for this blue wave over here I think how do I do that. So what I'll do is first I'll write the equation for wave 1 and 2. The yellow one we will call as wave 1, the red one or the pink one we'll call as wave 2 and the blue is the resultant wave. So for the wave 1, the equation that we get is y1 is equal to a1 sine omega t minus kx. And for the second wave, we will have equation y2 equal to a2 sine omega t minus kx plus 5. This is wave 1, this is wave 2. The wave 1 has amplitude a1, wave 2 has amplitude a2. The amplitudes are different. Secondly, we are also assuming that there is a phase difference between the two. These two may be out of phase and let the phase difference be 5. Therefore, I have taken y over here as the phase difference between wave 1 and wave 2. Now if I want to get a resultant wave for these two, I will have to add these two waves, two vector sum of these two and then we will get the resultant wave. Let us call the resultant wave as y. So y will be equal to y1 plus y2 equal to a1 sine omega t minus kx plus a2 sine omega t minus kx plus y is equal to so i'll keep this as it is sine omega t minus kx plus a2 and this could be i could think of this as a and this as b and we know that sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b So this will turn out to be sine of omega t minus kx cos phi plus cos omega t minus kx sine phi. And then y can be a1 sine omega t minus kx plus a2 sine omega t minus kx cos phi plus a2 cos omega t minus kx sine phi. In the first two terms I can take out these two terms common so I'll get sine omega t minus kx into a1 plus a2 cos phi plus 
in this I'll get cos omega t minus kx into e2 sin pi. So this is the equation for the resultant wave. Now what we will do is that I will say and I'll explain that later. I'll say that a1 plus a2 cos phi. This term a1 plus a2 cos phi. Let's say it is equal to r cos theta. And in a minute I'll explain what is r and what is theta. Similarly, a2 sin phi. A2 sin phi. I will call it r sin theta. R is the amplitude of the resultant wave and theta is the phase difference of the resultant wave with the first wave. So I have taken r cos theta as this and I have taken r sin theta as this. How I have done it and why I have done it. This is the resultant of the, this is the amplitude of the resultant wave and this is cos theta. Obviously the resultant depends upon the or rather the amplitude of the resultant wave and cos theta depend upon the initial two waves. So in this case I have the amplitude of wave 1, I have amplitude of a wave a2 and I have phi and these two terms will lead to the amplitude and the phase difference of the resultant wave. So therefore I have taken it as r cos theta. Similarly over here it has a2 sin phi. So I have taken it as r sin theta. And now I can rewrite this equation as y is equal to this a1 a2 cos phi is r cos theta. So I can write this as r of sine omega t minus kx into cos theta plus a2 sine phi is r sine theta. So I can write it as r cos omega t minus kx sine theta and I take r common i this is like sine a cos b plus cos a sine b because these two angles are same this angle is same right so if i again go back to refer to this particular formula sine a plus b sine a cos b plus cos a sine b so this term that we have seen just now looks like this so from this i can write it as sine a plus b so i can write this as sine a plus b so that will be equal to sine of omega t minus kx plus theta And this is the equation of the resultant wave r sin omega t chi theta. And in this, what is r? I can get the value of r from what I have just now. Seen. For example, I can write down r square cos square theta is equal to squaring this on, on both sides. I'll get a1 plus a2 cos phi whole square. And similarly, r square sine square theta is equal to a2 a2 square sine square phi and if i add both of them i'll get r square cos square theta plus sine square theta is one so i'll get over here r square is equal to a1 plus a2 cos phi whole square plus a2 square sine square phi and i have obtained r in terms of the amplitudes of the first two waves and the phase difference of the first two waves so i can easily find out r from this and put it over here Similarly, I can find out theta once I know r. Once I know r, I can put the value of r over here. I know a2 and I know sin phi, so I can find out theta. Or I could take the ratio of these two and take tan theta is equal to the ratio of these two. So I get both, I can find out both r and this from this and put this over here and get the equation for the resultant wave. If we open this up further, what we will get? We will get a1 square plus. 2a1 a2 cos phi plus a2 square sine square a2 square cos square phi plus a2 square sine square phi and this will be equal to a1 square plus 2a1 a2 cos phi plus this is a2 square cos square phi plus a2 square sine square phi so if i take a2 square common i'll get cos square phi plus sine square phi which is equal to what so i get a2 square so this is r square so I can find out the value of r square from this and put it in this equation, the equation of the resultant wave. And as I said earlier, if I take, uh, let me write, uh, I want to 
use this space so that we are able to see this equation. I can take r sine theta by r cos theta is equal to a2 sine phi by a1 plus a2 cos phi and this will give me tan theta is equal to a2 sine phi by a1 plus a2 cos phi. Again, I know a1, a2 and phi, so I can find out tan theta and from that I can find out theta, put it in this equation and I get the equation for the resultant period. So, to summarize, we have two waves with equations, these two, and if I add these two waves, I get the resultant, for a, resultant wave and that resultant wave equation is y is equal to r sine omega t minus kx plus theta where the value of r is given by this equation and the value of theta is given by this equation. Thank you.